Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the screen on the Samsung S22 Ultra. To start off the repair, we need to remove the delicate glass back cover of the phone. So I'm going to place this phone on the heat mat for the next 10 minutes to soften the adhesive under there. Once the phone's had its 10 minutes to heat up, we can flip it back over and then take a single-sided razor blade and begin creating a small gap between the mid-frame chassis and the back cover. Once you've created that small gap, add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol along the length of the phone, and then using a plastic playing card, we're gonna insert it a few millimeters to begin cutting away at the adhesive, holding down that cover. It's important to take your time with this because replacing these back covers is very expensive unless you want to settle for a cheap eBay copy. And then we're just gonna work our way around all four edges of the phone, adding a couple of drops of isopropyl as we work our way through. Once you've got the two long edges cut out and the bottom edge, you can just flick up the back cover like that to release that glass back cover. We'll take the phone off the heat mat now and get that out of the way. Place the back cover to one side and then we'll remove the stylus from the bottom of the phone as well as the SIM tray. We can now remove the nine crosshead screws securing down the shields for the logic board at the top of the phone. All these screws are the same size, so don't worry about muddling them up. Just make sure that you keep them safe for reinstallation later. And if you like repair content just like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos. Now those nine screws are out of the way, we need to disconnect the wireless charging flex cable, as well as this NFC antenna cable, and then using tweezers, remove the shield. The wireless charging coil is connected to this bottom shield here. Just fold it back for now, and we'll remove that later. We can now disconnect the battery and the display cable. Use tweezers to pry this upper plastic shield away from the board and disconnect the flex cable just next to the camera to release the shield. Disconnect the flex cable for the stylus holder as well as the front camera flex. Finally, there's one more flex cable just here. Disconnect that and pull it out of the way. We can now remove the logic board from the chassis and the easiest place to get this is with a spudger at the top of the cameras. Carefully pry underneath there to lift the board and release it from our chassis. I'll just leave that rest in there whilst we remove the subboard from this one. To remove the subboard, unscrew the six crosshead screws that are securing down the loudspeaker and plastic shield and keep those safe for reinstallation later. To lift the plastic shield, there's a small arrow point into a gap that will allow you to pry up on the shield and release it. Repeat the same on the opposite side to release that plastic shield. There's three more crosshead screws securing down the subboard on this one. Get those out of the way now. And then using the plastic spudger, lift the subboard out of the chassis, just like that. I much prefer to leave all these flex cables connected so that you can lift out the subboard and main board in one piece. And then before we, before we go any further with the disassembly, I'll add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol all the way around the battery to start loosening the adhesive, ready for me to pull that out with a suction cup. The display cable is connected to the back of the screen down there. Use the plastic spudger to release that and keep that safe. Moving up to the ear speaker now, there's two crosshead screws securing that down. Release the two screws, then get underneath it with a prying tool to remove it. The front camera on this model is secured into place with some, with some resin type glue. I use a heat gun set to 200 degrees 
and one of these small BGA hook tools to scrape out that adhesive. Once you've cut either side of the camera, you can get some tweezers and pry that camera out of there nice and easy. The last thing that we need to remove from the chassis now is the battery. Take your suction cup, apply it to the back of the battery, and then carefully lift up the battery to release it. We can now discard this broken screen. Now we can get our new genuine Samsung part. This comes with the frame already attached and ready to reassemble. Let's start reassembling it with the battery. Apply pressure to make sure that's secured in place. Then we'll remove these plastic films that protect the camera and sensors and flex cables, followed by the ear speaker and the two screws that secure that into place. Next, we'll go for the logic board. Just make sure that there's no flex cables in the way. You can bend these back a little bit, but just be careful not to fold them at all. And it installs easiest if you insert it at the top first and then make sure that it sits nice and flat. We'll go for the front camera next and reattach the flex cable as we go. Now let's reconnect the, this flex cable and the stylus cable and then reattach this top plastic shield and this flex cable to this little sensor here. Let's reconnect the display cable now. First to the logic board. And then to the back of the screen. And now we'll realign the subboard, sliding it into place from the bottom first. We can now re-secure those three screws that held that down. Then reinstall the loudspeaker and plastic cover. Resecure those eight crosshead screws that hold that into place. Then moving back up to the top of the phone, we can reconnect our battery now. and then lay down the metal shield for the wireless charging coil and an FC antenna and reconnect the flex cables for those. Reinstall the eight crosshead screws that secure the shields down at the top of the board. And finally, reinstall the glass back cover. Followed by the SIM tray. And don't forget the stylus pen. Now when we turn the phone on, you can see that we've got good image on there. And all that's left to do now is, te is test the functionality with sound, touch, vibrations, and the cameras as well as connectivity. That just about completes this repair. If you've had a go at doing this yourself, let me know how you went on in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.